What's going on YouTube fam? So today is a new day, a new episode, a new series. And before we even get started with the series, I wanted to put this little clip in here for you guys and introduce you guys to the series. So the series name is called Copycat. And basically what this is, is I'm gonna be taking your favorite creators and now you guys can vote on who you want me to do or I'll just pick some random. I'm going to try to mimic their style, whether it's through photos or videos, and I'm basically going to walk you guys through the process of how I did it, how I think that they do their workflow, how I think that they, you know, put everything together to make the content that they're putting out. So basically, I'm trying to run you guys through their style and how to do their style in my eyes, and you can basically make your own style from this. You can take two styles and put it together. You can blend it with your style. You can improve your style with some tips and tricks coming from their content. So basically this is for you guys to help you build your own style and find out what you like to do and what you're comfortable with and what the people that you look up to basically do to create their content. That's just a quick rundown of the series. I hope you guys enjoy and if there's anybody that you guys want me to do, and let me know who you guys would want me to do a video for. So today's episode is gonna be about What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Hi. So right now we are in the forest and I'm gonna be shooting my B-roll here. And so I'm gonna break down why I picked the lenses I picked. The 16 to 35 is gonna be the vlogging lens, which I'm on right now. The 35 is gonna be used for the wide angle B-roll shots and the 85 is gonna be used for the macro B-roll shots. That is the lens breakdown and we're gonna be needing three different types of clips to achieve the Peter McKinnon B-roll look. We're gonna need the wide angle shots the macro shots and the transitional shots. So something that Peter really does is he walks around and kind of observes the place. He kind of looks around and see what's cool about it, what he can get before he even starts shooting. So right now we're kind of just walking around and checking out the area, seeing what it's like and seeing what kind of shots we can get. Lots of green and lots of trees, lots of leaves. So lots of macro shots of the leaves, I'm guessing. I'm gonna get started on the B-roll right now and um, we're going to start off with the wide angle shots. Now what Peter does is when he gets a wide angle shot, he also gets a macro shot of the same exact thing so that he has more options to choose from. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a wide angle shot and then right after we're going to do a macro shot of the same thing and kind of work around those two. So the first lens we're going to be using is the 35mm 1.4 for the wide angle shots. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that Peter does a lot of his b-roll in 120 frames per second, so we're going to be running 120 frames per second for all of this b-roll. <laughs> So now that we have all of our wide angle shots with the 35, it's time to grab some macro or up close shots with the 85. I'm gonna be running the 85 1.2, not the 1.4 IS. I don't own it, but I'm gonna make it work with a 1.2 and make some really dope B-roll shots. our close-up shots and some transitional shots it's time to head back home and start heading all right guys so now we are in premiere pro ready to edit this video ready to edit this b-roll and try to copy peter mckinnon's style so before we even get started you know i had to pick a song from epidemic sound so i grabbed this song called bad attire from epidemic sound gonna import it into the clip and i'm actually gonna trim it down to make it pretty short because i kind of want to jump straight into it now before we get started with that even I'm going to let you guys know that I'm not going to be showing you guys the entire editing process for the sake of the tutorial, for the sake of the length of the tutorial. I'm just going to be trimming it up, showing you guys the important parts, and kind of what I think that Peter McKenna goes through when he's editing his videos in his process. Now, one thing I know that Peter McKinnon does is he does this mark in and mark out thing. So let's say that you have this clip here, right? And you're just watching it through from the, your source monitor, your source monitor right here. Now, let's say you like the way where this starts. You're going to mark in, keep watching it, and you like how it ends here. So you're going to end that, 
and mark out. So once you drag this clip in, it only shows those important parts of the clip. That way, you don't have to go through the entire video in the project timeline or anything. But I like doing that. I like putting it in the timeline and looking at it and see how it feels with the song. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to be doing the mark in and mark out like Peter McKinnon does. It's a pretty long intro sequence, but it jumps right into the beat and I like that. The clips are going to be a little weird, but I just really want to break down what I think Peter McKinnon does for you guys. So it's not going to look that great. I'm just trying to break down the techniques, the process, and how to look good or look like the Peter McKinnon style. What we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into it with this caution sign here. Now notice that this is color coded. Now I'm going to show you all my colors. So the orange is the wide angle shots, the purple are the transitional shots, and the pink is the ma close up macro shots. Peter McKinnon loves organization so I did organization for him. So when you drop the clips into the timeline they're already labeled with colors. So we're going to use this, this close up shot of the of the caution sign and we're gonna play this through now we're listening for the beat because the musicality is important you want to you want to cut on beats because it just really vibes with the viewer it really makes them feel like they're there and makes them experience something else other than just the video so as you can see we're jumping from this close-up to this wide shot now Peter does that a lot he does it through transitional shots he does it through a lot of things so we're gonna be doing that like boom right on the beat right on the beat we're gonna cut it and we're gonna cut it here so that's one first technique so that is the whole purpose of grabbing a wide and a close-up shot so that way you can transition between the two and kind of get two aspects of the same detail so Peter McKinnon does that a lot so here we have the close-up and then the macro of the same exact object and it's like you're looking at it at the same time but really in reality you shot that at, you could have shot that at two completely different times but nobody would ever know because it's the same thing just closer up and further away so that is one technique and then we're gonna jump into this here now this is gonna be a really quick speed ramp we're gonna add a speed ramp here so let's open up our speed ramp if you guys don't know how to speed ramp make sure you guys check out my video on my channel that I uploaded on Tuesday last week I actually have a speed ramping tutorial up so we're gonna enter a keyframe here and then a keyframe here where I wanted to end now we're gonna drag this up to 1000 all the way up and then zoom in so I can you know play around with these boom boom ramp it just a little and set okay now we're gonna kind of mess around what Peter likes to do when he adds a speed ramp is add a little whoosh or a, you know, a sound effect. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to throw in this little whoosh I have here. We've got to time it right though. we got to make sure it hits this point. Now in the song there's a little jitter, a little stutter like like a bunch of like simultaneous kicks. So I'm going to do a little quick effect with that. Normally in my style, I would hit every single beat, but I'm trying to copy Peter McKinnon. So he does not hit every single beat. Sometimes he, like this shot, there are so many beats in it, but he likes to prolong some of the clips. So that's exactly how I'm going to do it. And maybe I'll even add a little twist of my own style to it. I'm not sure. Let's use that, that little jitter there to make a little, add in a transitional shot and see what we can do with that. So we're going to go from the sign, right? We're on the sign. No, we're in the water. Okay. We're going to go from here. Let's find the transitional shot. So let's remove the audio here. Unlink that and grab a transitional shot from the water. Because I feel like the jitter is a great place to use a transitional shot because it blacked out for really quick second and then it jumps into this and then boom now we can end up in a whole new spot let's see where do we want to be let's jump since we were in a wide shot let's jump to a really up close shot of this now i think that it should match the color i feel like that needs a little bit of work Yeah, I, I, something. So I'm having a hard time trying to figure out <laughs> where a good transitional shot would be. Like, I, I, I don't know really how to work these transitional shots. I don't really like how it's feeling for me, you know. So I don't really know where to put it in. 
let's try using this one instead let's see how that works out because i'm having a hard time with that because i never really use these transitional shots i like to keep mine a little different from that so we'll see let's use that then jump into this up close shot okay. maybe if we zoomed in a little bit that does that looks a lot better however I'm going to flip this horizontally because rather than moving that way I wanted to move the other way you know and maybe even flip the speed or flip like reverse the clip maybe speed it up a little bit actually let's jump to 150 and see how this goes. and then zoom out because I have a clip just like it like this looks good and then it's got this 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 little weird da -da 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 sound in the song so I'm gonna kind of give like a I like that let's use another transitional shot here now we're gonna need to go up into the sky there here we have like a crazy little flip now we're gonna reverse the speed because it went from the sky to the ground so we're gonna have to go from the ground to the sky to match the clip so let's see how this works let's slow it down it went way too fast let's slow it down 50 let's see how this turns out I have a better idea. Let's put move this over a little bit. Let's use a different transitional shot. That one looks a little too weird. I don't think it looked that great. Let's try this one. This one actually I kind of went wild with it. So trim this up. Boom. Boom. Drop it on in here and let's see. Okay, so I think that is enough of the techniques that Peter uses. So here we have the intro sequence. He walks in with it, kind of introduces you guys to the scene, kind of gives you guys a vibe of what he's seeing, what he feels when he's walking through. We have them up close transitioning into a wide shot. And then we have a quick speed ramp, not to mention the sound effects here. And then we jump into a transitional shot into an up close shot back to a wide shot and then another transitional shot and when he uses some transitional shots it's good to he likes to um, use some sound effects too depending on the transitional shot so let's say that it was a little bit wider so let's drag out this transitional shot a little bit just a little drag it out a little more and then move this back a little and then so that's our little Peter McKinnon b-roll sequence copycat type thing in my opinion and there is one more thing you guys need to know so let's highlight all of our clips from the b-roll sequence and nest these clips right once we nest them we're gonna go to our effects and grab the crop okay so drag the crop on over to the nested sequence and then take 10% off the top and 10% off the bottom and bam, you have your little HD bars looking style. Now it's better to do this than to throw an image of the HD bars over top because the image could easily get distorted, easily get manipulated and kind of just turn out bad for your video. Now, the last thing we're going to want to do is color grade this. So, I'm going to add some sharpen, take some vibrance down, take some saturation down. And for Peter's videos, he likes to do like a dark, a really dark curve, or a little moodier type feel. So, we're going to be aiming for that. So, I'm going to grab the Lumetri colors and I'm going to paste it onto the next one. Now, this is going to show up a little bit different. Now, for the LUTs, you're, gonna, you're not going to want to use the full power of the LUT. 
and Peter likes to add this little dark so we're gonna tone down the highlights the shadows bring up the whites just a little bit and then the blacks down a little bit so the curves boom a little bit darker than usual I noticed that he loves to do vibrant and a lot of them and then sometimes he likes less saturated a little monotone a little yeah monochrome so we're just gonna settle with that so this one might be a little bit too way too bright I feel like it's too bright the whites are too up there so we're gonna see what we can do with this it's probably the curves huh I think it's just the lighting it might have been overexposed so in the end this is what we have extremely hot outside very humid i'm really sweating out here thank you guys so much for watching if you like the video make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it around with your friends make sure to drop me a comment below and let me know who you want me to copy next if you aren't already subscribed make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notification bells and i'll catch you guys in the next episode of copycat stay awesome